Hello, I'm here to show you the Nova Neptune lathe. It comes in two sizes. This is the Nova Max and the Nova Midi is just a little bit shorter in the bed. Otherwise, all the features are exactly the same. Now, the first and most wonderful thing about this is that every part of the lathe will slide as we'd expect that from other lathes, but the head on this will rotate and slide. So we can do all sorts of great things with that. Now, tailstock and banjo, we can take them both off very easily to utilize them in other ways. We just need to take away this little plate on the end, which stops the accidental removal but when you're at home, you may choose to leave it off. And then we find it is ever so easy to remove the tailstock. And there we see another beautiful feature is that it has a round plate underneath, which makes putting it back on a real easy move. And just slide it on and the banjo has a round plate underneath as well. Now another feature they've added into this, we see that the handle there on that's a little high, I prefer it a little lower. The nut under here is simply a nylock nut, so it's easy with a spanner just to loosen that nylock nut and you can lower the handle out of the way from your chisel. The only modification I've made here is that I have added a bit of wood to the steel hand wheel. The lathe comes with that much hand wheel and I like to have that there so that when I'm putting a chuck on or off I can hold the chuck still and rotate the shaft of the lathe. When we switch the lathe on it'll come to the default start speed of 100. Now we can quickly change that with this speed control knob. That takes it up in five RPM increments. If we push the knob in and then rotate, it's going up in 50 RPM increments. That's fine. The other thing is built into here are four preset speeds. Now you can change these to suit yourself. And I always recommend that they be incremental from one to four rather than putting an odd number in the middle. So for these, we can push function, we get speed here, and when we push on, there is the preset number one. And that is preset at 400 RPM on this lathe. Let's just go back to function. We can go to preset two by rotating the knob a little bit, and that's preset to 750. So when we press on again, we've got 750 RPM. So we can reset those. We've got that first speed, remember, that was 400. And I'd prefer that to be 300. So let's change that, reset one. And we see that that is 400. So we take that back to 300 and we've turned it to our chosen speed and we just push this until we hear an audible beep. There we go. So now we have 300 there, and when we use our speed and go to pre one, we find it's 300, fine. And we can do that with each of those four preset speeds. Now one of the common problems with lathes with swivel heads is the alignment of the head. Now on this lathe, the tailstock is always aligned. The base of that is milled to fit the, the bed. And so it is the head that swivels. Now for our next job, which is a small bowl, we don't need to bother too much about the alignment, but I'll show you this now. We use the Nova Acruline into the head and bring up the tail, loosen the head, so that it can rotate, put the tailstock on, 
firmly and now tighten up the head. And that should now be beautifully aligned. And we can take away our tail and use our knockout bar to get the acro line out of the head. Now I'll mount a piece of wood to turn a small bowl. I've already got this on a faceplate to make it easy. Now I like to hold that wood and rotate the lathe onto it. It saves me dropping the wood, damaging my toes and whatever. So we can put that onto there and we like to just firm that up with the chuck spanner. If we don't, then time and again, if we get a dig in here and these two faces of steel are knocked together, they can jam. And once that's happened, you have a very difficult job to take them off. Now, so for this, I would prefer a larger tool rest. So we can put on a larger Nova tool rest. And I'm going to start by hacking away this wood just as fast as I can. We'll come back later and be able to smooth it out and make a lovely job of it. This is a piece of walnut, looks good to me. Now for all my wood turning, at home or away, whatever I'm doing, I wear a face shield. Now, people will sometimes wear I safety glasses. Sometimes I'll come along prescription grasses and say that they are safety, but they're not. If a lumber wood hits these spectacles, it'll drive that glass into my eye. If it hits my teeth, it'll break the teeth. And I don't want to do all that. So safety shield at all times. And we can't talk very well behind it. So just allow me to get on with the work. I want to remount this on a 50 millimeter chuck, so I need to mark the bottom for a 46 millimeter spigot. Okay, time now to refine my cuts and make a smoother job of it with a, a smaller chisel and at this stage I like need to get out here so I can rub the bevel coming around. Okay the first challenge I have is that the tailstock hits me in the elbow so we can take that off. The next challenge I have is that I'm working with my arm out here and that is not good. So what we'll do is rotate the head a little and make it more comfortable for me to turn. Just that much, make a difference. We could probably come around a little bit more. There. Tighten up the head again. got what I think is passably adequate. We could sand that now, but what we'll do is turn it around and turn it around and start hollowing. Okay, head back to central position. We'll mount the chuck. Now again, I like to hold the chuck and rotate the spindle using the hand wheel saves me from dropping it. Now as with the faceplate we will firm up the chuck so that it doesn't slap on there. We just bring the 
keyhole back to central and mount our bowl in it. Now when we get down deeper in the bowl, we're starting to fail to rub the bevel. So we perhaps should change to a 55 degree grind on the chisel so that we can rub the bevel in the bottom of the bowl. Now that'll mean that I'm again wanting to get my hand out over there. So let's just rotate the head a little and make my turning more comfortable. Very simple, easy operation. So I can just check that we're rotating. That's good. The swivel head certainly makes it nice and easy to use. Right now let's just see how this lovely little lathe works with a piece of wood which is larger than will fit over the bed. Just a little bit, but enough to show us what can do. So for that we're just going to need, first of all, very clearly to turn the head so that our wood is hanging over the edge. Again, we just hold the wood and rotate the shaft until that's threaded and we can tighten that up. Again, we want to really firm that up because we don't want those things smacking together. Now, the easy thing here for this size is to slide the head along and Put the tuck tool rest on the other end of the lathe. So whoops, handle upwards and on it goes. So we'll turn the tool rest around and we can turn the head around to meet it and we can now be in a position that will allow us to shape the outside of this wood. Now we'd be better here to turn, put the handle, the locking handle of the tool rest onto the side here. This banjo has three holes for this locking handle to go onto, so we can make use of them. That's fine there. Am I fine? No, let's just move some more. And that will be better. Now I can be in a good position here. Okay. Check, check, check that it's loose and round. Okay, that's good. Now here we see a feature, another feature of the lathe which is useful. There's the on off switch, that's fine, I can reach that. But if I'm in a panic and need to shut it down quickly, I don't want to be reaching past this rotating wood. So we have an emergency stop button which is placed just there. And hitting that with my hand is enough to switch it quickly. Okay, so we're ready to roll there and get our sharp chisel. Now we're starting this at 300. Now for this roughing cut, I would actually prefer to be able to do a draw cut. So let's just see if we can't rotate the head so that I'm a little more comfortable doing that.
Now my next thing is I want to get a spigot on there to take a 100ml chuck. So let's just put it on a chuck. We can just, for our convenience, we'll just turn that there and lock the spindle lock. Now this spindle lock is rather wonderful too. It's going into the steel in the head, so it's a very robust spindle lock. Looks good. Okay, so now we want to start hollowing. So we can again look at the various options we've got for hollowing. Remembering that this won't quite fit over the bed of the lathe. And all our hollowing work is from the left. So let's just try and get that Another configuration we can try is to turn it round and see if we can just turn it off the end of the bed of the lathe. If we're working at that end and we don't want to reach around our wood in case of emergency. We can put the stop button, the emergency stop button there and take up our position here. This is, this is a very comfortable place to be. certainly makes it very comfortable being able to move around and shift both the head and the tool rest to wherever you want them. All right, now let's look at the hollowing of a tallish hollow form. The outside's been finished to my chosen shape, so now is the time to start putting a chisel inside. And we can just bring up the tool rest. Now, once again, I'm getting to a position where my arm is out here and an arm is a very poor support for a tool. So let's rotate the head and bring it to a more comfortable and stronger cutting position. We just need it around maybe that much. That works very nicely. Now the other alternative which people like is to turn a hollow form like that over the end of the bed. So we can just slide the head. And again, we'll have our emergency stop down here somewhere in case of need and 
we've got a ton of space here to be able to turn and keep this tool nice and firm. So there, Nova Neptune Max is good for a nice tall vessel like that. Let's see what happens if we try it with a rather wider hollow form. Or imagine this is a, a bowl with a big wide rim on it. How are you going to handle that? Again, some people say just let's do it over the end of the bed. And if we're doing that, we want to get the tool rest as close as possible to the end of the bed so that the lathe itself isn't in the turner's way. Or if the space we've got in our workshop isn't sufficient for going over the end of the bed, we can do that part way down the bed. So we can just turn that head a little, bring the tool rest around to here. And if that's not happy for you, we can go one step further and put the tool rest on the other end of the lathe. Stops real quick with that button. Alright, now let's just do a little bit of spindle turning to show you that to sort of complete the picture of bowls and hollow forms and big bowls and little bowls and so on. To start this, absolutely necessary that we align the head and the tail. Even if you're going to hold your wood in a chuck, you need that alignment. So we'll use the Nova Axe line again, loosen the head, bring up the tail, put it in place, and lock it. Lock it down. We can. I had that too far in, that's alright. And knock out bar. Now here again. One little modification I've made is to make a larger ball on the knockout bar. It's just easier on my soft old hand and we need to often get a, a good firm whack to move things out. Now for this spindle turning I'm going to use step centers because I want to cut the end of my wood down. It's going to be wood for the shaft of a wig stand and I want to cut it down to 26 millimeters. But that, that's a pretty <coughs> little bit of wood. Sorry about the knot in there. Um, <coughs> I can see now that this is this is a piece of Yan'an poplar, um, one of the aspen poplar family. So we can cut down the very ends of this to 26 millimeters, lower the tool rest.
Now for one of these wig stand shafts, I like to put a large bead on each end and then we can decorate what we like each end. The bead just covers up the edge of the hole in the foot or the head that 26 millimeter piece is going into. Now we can decide, decide on what shapes we're going to put in the middle and that'll make a lovely wig stand for one of the cancer ladies who needs a wig. We donate them all to look good, feel better in Auckland and they absolutely love them. And this one with its ripple there will be extremely nice.